Hello, hello everybody. How are we doing today? How are we doing today? I'm sure we're doing great. <laughs> I know we're doing great, right? I was the week being. I'm sure it was blessed. And I know this new week is going to be blessed as well. We give God all the glory and all the praise. So did any of you have an encounter? Because I remember saying that this week we're going to have an encounter. Well, um, I thank God that we're all here again to do this business. So let me pray quickly before... Um, let me pray quickly before we go into today's business. Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this great day, this wonderful day that you have made. I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise because you are worthy, oh God. You are worthy, Jehovah. There is none like you in heaven on earth and underneath the earth. You are the only true God. Have mercy upon me, O God. In whichever way I have sinned against you, have mercy upon me, O God. Forever doubting you, God. Have mercy upon me, O God. Have mercy, God. Have mercy upon your people, Jehovah. Because without you, we are nothing, God. Let your mercy continually speak for us, God. Today, we've got out here again to do your business, God. And I ask, oh God, that I will decrease for you to increase, God. I ask, oh God, let the Holy Spirit come and take control. May I not say what you haven't asked me to say. And may I not do what you haven't asked me to do, God. May everything that's going to be done today, O oh Jehovah, be according to your will, my Father. Let it be according to your will, God. Not according to the will of anybody or anything, but according to your will. Give us the strength to intercede for your people, O oh God. Because that is what you have called us to do, to intercede, O oh God. Father, may they not hear my voice, oh boy, may they hear your voice, oh God. As I speak, oh God, may they hear only your voice. And may the word bear fruits in their hearts in the name of Jesus. I cover everything we're going to do today with the blood of Jesus. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I cover your people out there with the blood of Jesus. Father, Lord, almighty King of glory. May everything we're going to do today be acceptable unto you, oh God. In Yeshua's most powerful name, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, everybody. Sorry. Mm. Woo. <laughs> so, uh, Jesus. Okay. Um. Today, I'm going to be talking, I'll just go quickly into the word and then we'll pray, okay? I'm a little, um, I don't know what's the word to use. I don't know the word to use, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm feeling some type of way today. I don't know. I know why, actually. I won't say I don't know why. I know why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling, but. I pray that the power of God will take control and that we will do that which he has called us to do today. Okay. So today, um, what I want to talk to us about is where are the true prophets 
and what is the scripture teaching you, you know? And we're gonna be looking at um, 2 Peter 1, 1 verse 21. And that says, this is the New, New King James Version. It says, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but only men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And then we're also gonna look at 2 Timothy um, 3, 16. That says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for cor correction, for instruction in righteousness. And then the last scripture we're going to look at today is Romans 15 verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. These are our scriptures for what I want to talk about today. So like I said, I don't know anything. You know, I just get this word and I come out here to give it to you because that's what the Lord has asked me to do, you know. So today, I want to ask us, what is the scripture teaching you? You know, I told us that the scripture, from what I got to understand, is something, it's like, it's a manual, you know, it's like a manual, rather, you know, for us to know God, you know, his ways, the things that he can do, what he has done, you know, what he's about to do and stuff like that. But it doesn't mean that it tells everything about God. You know, there, there, there are still more. There is still more to God that is not in the Scripture, in the Bible, rather. You know, so um, lately, I'm this kind of person that I like to pray really hard. I think I said it before. You know, I like to wake up at midnight and really pray and pray. You know, and I've been doing this. That's all I've come to know. I felt that's the way that you pray and it is effective. You know, the, the amount of energy you put into prayer, the way, you know, mm, the way, you know, I don't know, like the way you pray. Like I pray really aggressively and all that when I want to pray, especially when I'm, I'm, I'm upset or especially when I'm praying for something. And for some reason, I like to pray at midnight, you know, so. One day I, I prayed and prayed and prayed and I had the Lord whisper to me and said, it's enough. You have prayed enough. You have prayed enough, not like you shouldn't pray anymore, but this manner of prayer that you've been praying, it's enough. You know, I just want you to be in my presence. And that's how I got to understand what it really means, you know, having a relationship with and communicating with God rather. You know what I mean? Yes, I've had a relationship with God, but I was communicating with God um, wrongly because I was only going there and telling him and telling him and telling him and telling him. I never even had the time to listen because everything I was doing was according to the way I was taught how to pray. And the Lord had to teach me how to pray. And he said, I just want you to be in my presence because prayer is a two-way thing. It's not a one-way thing where you just come and offload whatever you want to offload on me and think that you have prayed and then you live. How do you then get the, the answers to your prayers? How do you then, you know, get the instructions to your prayer? Because the truth is that we think that when we pray and live all those things like that, the Lord will supernaturally do those things that we have asked him to do. And the Lord made me to understand that you have to listen so I can give you the instruction. I can tell you, you know, how to go about the situation. I can give you the strategies and all that. You know, so I started, you know, I started laying in his presence or, you know, just sitting in his presence quiet and, and start communicating with him. But I was finding it, it, I was finding it difficult because I'm used to always praying so hard. I felt like that, what I was doing with the Lord wasn't effective. I felt like I wasn't prayer. And I said, God, this isn't prayer. Like, I don't feel like I'm praying because I'm just 
you know, communicating, like communicating with you. And because I'm so used to, you know, just talking and talking and telling you and quoting the scriptures and saying this and saying that, now I'm just in, in silent communication with you. I feel like I'm not praying, you know. And it not made me to understand. I said, what better way to pray? Do you prefer to pray the way that you were praying, where you just come in Allah and Allah and say all that you want to say and go? Or do you, or this, because he said, this is, a, this is the most effective way to pray. And this is how I want my children to pray. He said, do you know what it meant when they said that um, we should pray in our closet, go into our closet and pray? And the Lord was making me to understand. He said, what do you think that meant? You think it meant that you should go into your, your, your physical closet? No, it's your heart. And I made us to understand that everything that we do with the Lord is from the heart. The Lord has made me to understand that the heart is our communication channel. You know, and that's the only way you can. Jesus, I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm feeling some type of way today. And, um, I just pray that I have the strength to finish what I'm going to do today. So, uh, so the Lord made me to understand that uh, our heart is our communication channel. So that's where everything comes from, you know. So I laid there and the Lord was telling me these things. Mm -hmm. And that's how today's word came about. Um, so like I said, I don't summarize these words like I used to. I'm just going to read them out like it was given to me. You know, so the Lord made me to understand that there are days, you know, when you are in constant communication with, when you when you pray, you know, the two way prayer, which means when you communicate with him, he communicating with you and you communicating with him, that you're in constant prayer. You're not just, you're not just craving time to pray. And that's what the spirit of the Lord made me to understand. He said, it's not like when you just create time to pray that you're in constant prayer. So even when you're doing whatever thing that you're doing, you're in constant communication with him. There is no time set aside to do that thing. When you begin to communicate with God, you know, um, but wait, like when you begin to communicate with him, when he talks to you, when you talk to him, because most times you do more of the listening than even the talking. You know what I mean? So the Lord made me to understand that we're operating on a system based on human and not, and, and not based on human and not divine wisdom. That is the trick of the enemy. And that's how the enemy has taught us or taught our leaders to teach us how, how to pray by just, you know, quoting the scriptures, like re um, quoting the scriptures, like reciting the scriptures, right? And just saying whatever thing they want to say to God and not even, you know, listening to God for him to give us the revelation that we need, for him to give us the answer that we need, for him to give us the strategy that we need, for him to give us the instructions that we need in order for us to get that situation under control or in order for him to show his son, Jesus, in that dimension that we want to see Jesus. Like I told us in one of my videos, he said the word of the Lord he said his word is what turns things around and the word of the lord is jesus and god is the only one who can demonstrate we can show you jesus in the dimension that you need jesus to appear for you which is whatever it is that you are praying for god is the only one that can show the son in that dimension to take care of that situation you know so um the lord made me to understand that Reciting the words just makes us religious. And like I said in one of my videos, the Lord made me to understand that a lot of us Christians are just religious. You know, we're not spiritual. We're just, you know, we're operating under the spirit of religion and not under the spirit of God. The Lord made me to understand that. 
And he said, that's the, that's one of the thing though. And I told us that the enemy who, who is the, the angel of light, you know, he uses the same thing because he knows the word. He knows the word even more than we know the word. So he knows the word. So he uses the same word that is in the Bible and twist it and twist it and turn it around, you know, and sell it back to us. And then we'll buy this thing and we'll buy this word and start to operate the way that he has sold it to us because he will sell it to us in a way that it will make sense to our spirit and it will make sense to us rather you know what i mean and then we'll start to operate uh, we'll start to operate that way and from there we start telling people that's how to operate that's how to operate and that's why i keep saying how do you know that god is the one that gave those instructions were you there you know what I mean? Do you know the spirit this person is operating under when the Lord, when this person got the instruction? Do you know if it was the angel of light that gave this person the instruction? But God is saying that if you have a relationship with him one-on-one, -on -one, he will give you the instruction because you know who you are talking to. You know who you are in communication with. So when he gives you the instruction, you know this is directly from God. You know, so the Lord made me to understand that a lot of us are just operating under the spirit of religion you know, and not actually hearing or communicating with the Lord. You know, that is why we're taught to recite the Bible. And they tell you that, oh, you need to quote the Bible. When you quote the Bible, X, Y, Z place in the Bible, you think that that is what is going to make the, that's what is going to make the enemy flee. No, quoting the Bible won't make the enemy flee because the enemy knows the Bible and he can quote the Bible really well too. And that's what I've come, I've come here today to make us understand. So if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're taught that you need to just recite the Bible or quote the Bible in the course of your prayer, then the enemy is going to flee. That's not possible. The word has got to be, the word of God will have to be alive. And the word of God is Christ Jesus. And the only way you can get that word is when you're in communication with God. And God made me to understand. And that's why some people, I don't know, you know, there are, for some people, when they when they go into prayer, the Lord gives them a, a, a place in the Bible. He refers you to a place in the Bible. And then when you go to that place in the Bible and read that thing that the Lord has referred you to, you know, the Holy Spirit will allow it to sink into your spirit, man. That's when the word becomes a life. It's not just quoting it and just saying it. Just saying it doesn't make the word come alive. Like I told us, God is the only one we can who, who can talk, who can make the word come alive with the word which is Jesus Christ in that dimension that you need to see Christ. And that's why Jesus came and died for our sins. And that's why they say Jesus is, is in the right hand, hand side of God interceding for us. You know? So the Lord made me to understand that what do you think it means when they say seek the face of the Lord? It doesn't mean that you should just go and starve yourself, which is which some people do and say they are fasting and then just pray and pray and pray and pray. Seek the face of the Lord means to, to, to listen, you know, to receive from the Lord. How can you receive from the Lord if you're not listening to the Father? You can only receive from him when you listen to him. And not when you just go there and talk and say whatever thing that you want to say. And the Lord made me to say, say, how do you think people of old got the prophecies from him? Do you think they just went there and started talking? No. He spoke and they listened. You know, and the Holy Spirit made me to understand that we should stop reciting the scripture because the scripture, some of the words and stories there are about men. What men did and what men said. As well as the actual words of God. So there are two things in the scripture. What men did and what men said and the actual words that came out of the, uh, that came from God. You know, which were spoken by his prophets. He gave them those words to speak. So do not confuse the two. The words and deeds of men and the words spoken by God, they were all added to make the Bible so it will be profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Misinterpretation of the scripture is what brought division in the body of Christ. And that's what the Holy Spirit made me to understand. Where everybody wants to be right, where everybody wants to interpret the Bible, interpret the scripture their own way. Where they think that their own interpretation of the scripture is more accurate than others. And that was what ushered the enemy 
into a lot of a lot of um, um believers lives and that's why the enemy came and took root in the body of christ in churches that's why a lot of churches are in darkness the lord made me to understand that we're supposed to be one body meaning in agreement that is why we can't work together that is why you see that this church is against that church that church is against that church and we're all believers and we're all calling on the same god god is not an author of confusion so if god is telling you that thing and he's telling mr a a different thing and telling mr b a different thing then there is confusion and our god is not a god of confusion and that is why the church is the way that it is and that is why the church is not growing growing is not physically by having ten thousands of members spiritually the church is not growing and that's why a lot of things are happening because we cannot do what the lord has called us to do because everybody wants to be right everybody wants to say i am the one that have a better relationship with god i am the one that knows god better i am the one that understands the bible better i am the one that can interpret the bible the bible better we're supposed to be talking about one good news the gospel now the gospel is is is, is given in different ways everybody has a story to tell everybody comes and says whatever thing they want to say of their understanding of the gospel but this gospel is supposed to be one it's supposed to be one we all should be talking about this one gospel not different interpretation of the same gospel. We all know that Jesus came and died for our sins. And then you have to accept him and repent, you know, for you to have access to the Father. So what are we talking about? And the Lord made me to understand that the misinterpretation of the scripture is what has caused division in the body of Christ. You know, The Lord said, what spoken by him directly are the prophecies to his people. And there were words needed at a time to solve situation and also to give us knowledge of what is to come. So when the time comes, we can ask in God for the strategies or techniques to use, you know, to defeat the enemy or to, to conquer whatever thing that is coming. Because that's how much God loves us. He likes to warn us before time, ahead of time, rather. Letting you know that this is what is going to come, my child. Even with your walk with him, the Lord will warn you ahead of time. This is what is going to come. This is what is going to come. Like um, last week, was it last week or last two weeks? I think it was last week or last two weeks. I had the Lord say to me clearly, he said, my child, you need to be extremely careful because the enemy is coming. He told me, he said, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you have to be really careful because the enemy is coming. So no matter how, no matter the, any way the enemy comes, do not speak a word. Don't fall into the trap of the enemy. And the enemy came that Thursday. The enemy came on Saturday, on, on Saturday. And I was like, oh, okay, this is what the Lord was telling me about. But no, the enemy wasn't done. He came on Sunday. And Sunday was the height of it all. But you see, ordinarily, when the enemy came, I would have engaged. I would have said what I'm not supposed to say or say stuff because I, you know, the enemy comes in a way that you are so right that, you know, you just know that you are right. And so you want to stand your ground and, you know, say what you've got to say. But I heard the word of the Lord that said, do not engage, do not speak a word. So even though the enemy came viciously on Sunday morning, I didn't say a word. And because I didn't say a word, the enemy left. But if I had engaged the enemy, if the Lord had not given me you know, instructions before then, warning before then, I would have engaged the enemy and it would have brought a different result. So that's who our God is. So those prophets, he's going to warn you even ahead of time. So when that time comes, you will know how to tackle the situation or handle the, the, the matter or whatever it is. 
Just as the Bible made us to understand that the end time certain things are going to happen. Now we're all sitting and we're watching these things playing out, but nobody's doing anything. Nobody's going to the Lord in prayer to ask the Lord for strategies, to ask the Lord for instruction on how to defeat the enemy, on how to conquer the spirit. We're all, we're all we're, no, we're just sitting and waiting because we had that the, because we already knew that the Lord uh, spoke about these things and then we're waiting for these things to play out and then let everything that the Lord has said happen. But that's not what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to fold our hands and watch. We're supposed to use that when, when we start to see the signs. We're supposed to be in prayer and seeking the face of the Lord, getting instructions, getting strategies on how to, to you know, to, on how to defeat the enemy or play our own part. But no, because we all have different interpretation of what the word of the Lord, what uh, what the scripture is saying. You know, why just sit down and fold up your hands waiting for what to happen to happen instead of seeking him to give us the strategy to handle them? How many are listening to God today? And that's what the Lord is asking us today. How many people are actually listening to him, listening to what he has to say? You know, to get the prophecies that will change situations. To get the prophecies, the prophecies that will change the situations of this world and not just for self or individual uh, um, prophecies. How come all the most prophets these days only talk about individual prophecies? Is the Lord not concerned about the nations anymore? Is the Lord not concerned? Of, is the Lord not concerned about generations to come anymore? How come it's just uh, personal prophecies that prophets are talking about these days? That's what the Lord is asking. Every prophet wants to give a personal prophecy to, 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 to people. Is the Lord not speaking to you anymore? Is the Lord not speaking anymore? Has he kept quiet? How come we're not getting revelations or prophecies from prophets about the nations, about generations to come, about things that are going to happen? Is God not revealing those things anymore? That's because we don't listen anymore. So even when the Lord is speaking, we don't hear. Because we're carried away with different things. The spirit of religion has kept us bound. So now we're doing religious things and not spiritual things anymore. Every day you have conferences. Every day you have different uh, seminars. You have this and you have that and you're teaching people this and you're teaching people that. How come you're not teaching people about listening to God and hearing from God? How come you're not having conferences and seminars talking about repentance, about the coming of Christ, talking about forsaking your ways and making your ways right? How come we're not getting, how come we're not doing conferences and seminars like that? How come our seminars and, prof, uh, and, and, and uh, conferences and all other stuff that people do these days is about self, it's about prosperity? It's about making you this and making you that. How come we're not doing these conferences and seminars to win souls to God, to talk about God, to talk about the good news, to talk about what God is expected, what, what God is expecting from us as a people. What God is saying in this season, what God is saying right now concerning us. How come we're not having conferences and seminars about such things? All we hear about is how to make you a prophet, how to, to, to make you uh, 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 be, make you that and make you that. Is that what the body of, is that what the gospel is about? Why have we monetized the gospel? Everybody wants to have something, asking people to pay this and pay that and pay that and pay that and pay that. And it's not like you're even asking them to pay so you will tell them about God and tell them about the importance of making their ways right and looking unto God and, 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 and seeking after God and chasing after God. You take all these money from people to teach them unnecessary things. Meanwhile, they caught thing that is going to save the person. You're not telling them about those things. You're not talking about the important thing, which is making their ways right and looking on to God and holding on to God and chasing after God with everything that they have. How come that is no longer important? Is that not what the good news is? 
Is that not what the gospel is? What did the Lord ask us to go out there and talk about? The gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. How come we're not talking about that anymore? And even when people want to talk about it, they talk about it so, 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 um, um, what's the word to use? So lightly. So it doesn't even have the impact that it's supposed to have in the, in the in, uh, 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 have the impact it's supposed to have, you know, to the people of God. So how can the gospel, um, how can the gospel bring forth those fruits or bring forth those things that it's supposed to bring forth? When we're no longer focused on the gospel of Jesus Christ anymore. We're not focused on the gospel of prosperity. We're not focused on the gospel of prophecy. Everybody wants to give prophecy. Everybody wants to prophesy. What are you prophesying about? What are you talking about? Are you talking about what the Lord is saying right now concerning his people? Concerning the nations, concerning generations to come. How come you're only giving God's, how come you're only giving prophecies to individuals? Oh, God is going to do this for you. Oh, God is going to do that for you. I hear the Lord say he's going to do this. I hear the Lord say he's going to do that. How come you're not giving them prophecies about the Lord saying to them, make your ways right. And turn away from sin. How come you're not giving them such prophecies? How come all the prophecies is about money, 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 prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. Oh, God said he's going to do this. Oh, God said he's going to do that. Is that all God is saying to you? So where are the true prophets? That's what the Lord is asking. Where are those prophets that he has called that can really hear him? How come they are not hearing what he's saying in this season? How come they are not out there speaking what he's saying? So who are you getting your prophecies from? Because if you're getting your prophecies from the most high God, God is not one that will select the path of the path that you like and tell you. God will give it to you straight up because our God is a God of truth. He's not deceptive. He's, he doesn't lie. So God will not just tell you, oh, tell this person only the good things. No, that's not the God that I've come to know. God will tell you about the truth, and the, the good and the bad because he created good and bad. So God will give a prophecy if you're going wrong. God will say, make your ways right. If you're a murderer, the Lord will give a, a prophecy saying that, oh, you are a murderer, make your ways right. Oh, you are a thief, make your ways right. Oh, you're a fornicator. Make your, how come people are not talking about those things that the people are, the sins that people are committing? How come God is not giving you prophecies about the sins out there, but God is only giving you prophecies about prosperity? It is time for us to sit back and begin to think. Where are the real prophets? The ones that are not afraid to speak, thus say the Lord. Because they know they're not speaking their words. They are speaking the word of God. So it doesn't matter who, who that word offends. Where are those prophets? Are they sleeping? How come nobody is hearing their, nobody is hearing their voices? How come they're not sounding the alarm that is sounding seriously? How come? Where are those prophets? Every day you come on Facebook, on Instagram, you see people talking about this and talking about God. How come they are not sounding the alarm? How come the ones that are sounding the alarm are so few? And that's why the Lord said that the people that are right with him, they are so few. So few. So few. Reciting the Bible doesn't change the situation. It is the word given to you when you are in communication that does the miracle. And that's what the Lord wants us to understand. Don't come and say, oh, um, Isaiah this and that said this and that and that. Oh, Matthew this and that said this and that and that. And expect that that is what will make the, that, that is what will give you the miracle. That is what will change the enemy. I'm telling you today that the devil himself knows the scripture more than you do. So you reciting the scripture Without the scripture coming alive, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Oh, 
For you to make that scripture come alive, you have to be in communication with God. And how can you be in communication with God when you're living in sin? When sin has overtaken you? When all you care about is what man wants and not what God wants anymore? Yes, you're expecting a miracle from this same God. The same God that you don't reverence. The same God that you don't have respect for. So God is good enough to give you a miracle, but God is not good enough for you to make your way straight and hold on to him and chase after him. If they tell you today that Donald Trump is going to give you $50 million, will you not chase after Donald Trump? Will you not do everything that Donald Trump wants you to do? You will do it because you want that money. Will you do things against his wish yet expect to collect the, get the money from him? That's what the Lord is saying to us today. Why do you believe him only for the miracles? Why do you believe him only for the good things? Why don't you believe him enough to give him your life, to make your way straight? What is going on? What is going on? We have generations that are coming that are looking onto us. What are we giving to these people? What are we teaching them? What are we telling them? What are we saying to them that the Lord is saying to them? Just as the people of old gave us the prophecies from God about what the Lord is saying that is going to happen in our time. What is the Lord telling us right now to tell the people that are coming behind us what is going to happen in their time? How come the Lord is not speaking that to us? How come the Lord is no longer interested in generations anymore? How come the Lord is only interested in individual prophecies these days? Where are the real prophets? That's what the Lord is asking. Where are you? You have given the stage to these people that come here and say all sorts of things that they're not even hearing from God. Because the God I know is not a God that will be afraid to tell you the truth. No matter how hard the truth is, he would let you know. My child, this is this. My child, this is that. You know? So we need to check ourselves and begin to make our ways right. The words and deeds of men in the scripture are the words of men unto God in their situation or circumstances. Psalms, we we'll all quote Psalms today and say, oh, Psalm this and Psalm that. Those were prayers and songs by David to the Lord. David was a man like you and I. He was human rather, like you and I. But he wrote those prayers, he sang those songs unto the Lord that we all keep talking about today. What are you writing to the Lord? What are you singing unto the Lord today? What are you praying unto the Lord today? That people, that, that generations to come will remember and say, oh, this was what Ceci prayed about, or this was what Ceci sang about to the Lord. That changed Ceci's situation. Or that changed Ceci's uh, 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 circumstances. Why don't you sing unto the Lord with your own words or dance naked? David danced naked unto the Lord. And people thought he was crazy. No, he wasn't crazy. But that was how much he reverenced the Lord. That was how much he loved the Lord. And today, you want to receive the blessings of David, but you're not willing to do the things that David did unto the Lord. How the 